In the early days of video games, the camera moved with you, there wasn't really any choice. In Super Mario Bros., the camera moved right when you moved right. This was the only kind of manipulation you could cause in the camera, it was all fixed. So that's two examples of camera angles affecting both how the game is played and the experience are Zelda and Metroid. Since I talk about Zelda too much already, let's start with Metroid. Both the original and Super Metroid are platform shooter exploration adventure games, and the experience reflects that. Super Metroid requires exploration to find hidden items and new abilities to give you new experiences with each item you pick up. However, when Metroid switched to first person with Metroid Prime, the experience changed as well. It felt much more isolated, because when a game takes a first person perspective, it's easier to input yourself onto the character. You're not controlling Samus anymore, you're controlling yourself as Samus. The first person games also had more of an emphasis on shooting with an infinite amount of directions to aim instead of just eight. Zelda's change to top down from third person is similar to Metroid's. Link to the Past focused more on exploration because the top down perspective shows you what's around you. In Ocarina of Time, the camera only shows you what's in front of you because the game is more combat based. But why not keep the top down perspective for combat based games? Well, imagine fighting someone, but you could only see from a camera on the ceiling. It would be hard to tell what your opponent is doing without seeing their whole body from the front. The enemies in A Link to the Past are designed with this in mind. Their attacks don't require skill and sword play to beat, so normal enemies are simpler and require no thought to fight. However, in Ocarina of Time, you feel accomplished when you kill the Stalfos because you have to think about when to attack, when to dodge, and when to move. All because of the camera angle and how the game was designed around it. Pokemon has two main perspectives, as is the case with most RPGs. There's the top-down perspective while adventuring, and the over-the-shoulder angle during a battle. On roads, in in towns, or buildings, the camera takes a top-down perspective that, as I've said before, encourages exploration. You might see a Pokeball in the corner of the screen and say, I want that, but how can I get there? That's exactly what the developers want you to say so you go and explore to find a way to get to that Pokeball. This feels natural because when you go out into a field in real life, you want to see as much as possible. During a Pokemon battle, the camera goes behind your Pokemon, supposedly through the eyes of you, the trainer. This feels natural because if Pokemon battles were to happen in real life, you would be witnessing it from this angle. But what about actual fighting games like Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, or even Smash Bros? They all take place from a side view camera. Wouldn't it make more sense for them to take a natural fighting stance? No. Games like Street Fighter require you to see what your opponent is doing and deciding how to act. The side perspective allows both you and your opponent to view each other without a split screen. The attacks are designed with this in mind. Imagine being in a 3D fighting game, but still using attacks you would use in Smash. It would add a whole new level of difficulty of aiming your shots and dodging. Camera angles and perspective are the defining feature of the horror game. Like in most games, the game and the type of horror it will present differs from the camera angles. Think about the early Resident Evil games with their fixed camera perspective. The type of horror it presents, survival, is influenced by the camera angle and creates an ominous feel, like someone is watching you. This keeps you on edge, and when the enemies do appear, you have a good enough perspective to shoot from without it being too easy and taking away the panic factor. When Resident Evil eventually switched to an over-the-shoulder perspective, the horror also changed. The panic and dread switched from not being able to shoot in time to, what will happen if I turn this corner? And what I mean by that is that with fixed camera angles, you can see what's happening in the room, and you can see all sides of the character. When it changes to over the shoulder, you don't have that perspective anymore, changing the element of fear. With all this talk about perspective, this begs the question of what angle offers the most immersive experience? The answer most people jump to is first person because it's easy to project yourself onto the character you're playing as. 
And while I agree with that, a lot of the best first-person games have a lot of story involved, including the playable character. With all this story, you know a lot about the character that isn't easy to relate to, making it harder for you to project yourself onto the character. And while yes, first-person games are immersive, I don't believe that they are the most immersive type of game. So, why do camera angles and perspective matter? They define the game and what it does. Games are often based around what perspective they take and we don't even notice. We as the player accept the angles for what they are, and if you've ever played a game with really bad camera angles, you do realize how important the camera is. Hey everybody, I'm the Mighty Dragon Wolf. Thank you so much for making it all the way through this game talk. I have worked so hard on this, you don't even know. I've been slaving away at my computer. I know I don't do half as much of the editing as some of the big guys, but man, if I didn't work hard on this video. to And to know that you have made it this far to listen to me talking right now, that means so much to me that people have really said, I want to watch this whole video. So, if you liked it, let me know by either leaving a like or leaving a comment. Both ways, let me know that you liked it, and uh, give me some suggestions for future game talks, because I'm going to start scripting another one real soon. So, look out for that in the future, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in another video. Game talk or let's play, whatever I do now.